Be my friend. You would better go and get a pen. Come on. And maybe we can keep in touch. Like we did in the old days. It was so long ago. I'm old And wish you well. There's at least 700 people here tonight. Sign your pen now. People at home, they never know how many people are there. They never know. Thousands. There are a thousand people here tonight. This is the most tickets we've ever sold. All right, now let's hear from the other sections of the arena. Hell yeah, that was just the front row. This place is slammed tonight. If you're in your car on your way to work or you're working out or you're doing, well, I don't know when people listen to this. I don't know when people listen to a podcast. To go to sleep. You're trying to fall asleep I and you want the popular. soothing tones yeah, of I Daniel's think, voice. I, I'm here to help. Yeah. Hi, Roar. Hey, how are you? I'm great, buddy. How are you? I feel like I can't figure out how to sit down is what I feel like. Oh, you get it. It's just I've never been in an arena before and so I don't know. <laughs> this is my first, sorry, sorry, this is my first it arena. It's weird to look out and see a lot of people just watching us on the screens rather yeah. than looking at Hey us. guys, quit looking at the Jumbotron. We're like up here. Right here. We're up here right now. Man, what a good uh, pre-show meet and greet we had for everybody who paid for that package. Thank you so much. So I thought, I honestly, I was like, coming out of COVID, money's going to be tight for people, no. recession, gas prices. <laughs> people were still willing to spend upwards of $3,000 for that meet and greet. Wild. That, and, and I was, was like, fuck, part, that, that kind of support? That wasn't even the picture package. And we couldn't even meet most of the people. Wait, a lot of, we just waved. We that. waved from a distance and we said, this counts, right. no yeah, refunds. Yeah, 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 exactly. This counts. And they were like, thank you, it counts for us too. <laughs> which was, you want an understanding <laughs> fan group. Um, if you're listening, uh, however, if, maybe if you're in a car or whatever, don't get freaked out when we start doing the t-shirt cannons. That's a part of the show. <laughs> it is. Don't go, oh my God, who's shooting who? Well, we are shooting them with right. t-shirts. Right. Yeah, it's all in fun. I can't get my drink. <laughs> Life isn't easy after the, the lockup. I call it the lockup. Hey, <laughs> our recent episode... Um, people got really pissed off about peanut butter and jelly. Yeah. What the fuck? There's a lot of passion. I don't know when this episode what? drops, but whenever way it does, after. way just remember a way long time ago when peanut butter and jelly became a very people. I I saw some people with comments that were more. They were angrier about that than any socio political thing that's happened. They, you get it, they didn't say a word about January 6th, but no. they were like, what did you say, creamy or crunchy? And then, <laughs> what did you say? Yeah, there was a guy who was like, one of our pen pals was like, uh, oh, you guys with your California peanut butter and jelly. And I'm like, <laughs> first of all, first of all, you dumb fuck, that's what I wrote. I was like, do you think, raspberry preserve, that's all rose shell. And did you skip the part where we said Wonder Bread? What are you talking about? Yeah, you Californians. Californians. You goddamn lib sandwich lovers. Yeah. I love it when people are like, you LA. You know what LA is? It's a bunch of people that are from wherever you, you're probably exactly. leaving this comment right, from. Right, right. You LA types <laughs> out there chasing your dreams and losing a lot of money in the process, <laughs> but you feel that life is kind of a one-shot deal, so you might as well go for it if your creative spirit is calling for you to try to do something mm -hmm. bigger than you, yes. and so you're willing to put all of your joy and Keep safety going. on the line. You guys are crazy the way you make sandwiches out there. <laughs> I don't care that you missed your grandma. <laughs> I don't care most of your family life was destroyed by the fact that there's a calling inside of you <laughs> to want to entertain people right. through the joy of laughter and smiling. And you couldn't be happy just working for the park district <laughs> like everybody else. Yeah. Why do you think you're better than Denny's? You're not. not. You're not. Come back to you, town. You weren't in high school <laughs> and you still aren't. Come back to it's someone from Rochelle. Right. Come back, Danny. Come back, Danny. Come back. You you were you did background on Grey's Anatomy. You already made it. Just come back. You already made it. <laughs> you made it. What more is there to do? <laughs> you made it. You saw Pompeo. You made it. <laughs> <laughs> uh. 
Ugh. And then you have to comment, like, that wasn't me. I wasn't in that show. <laughs> no, I did. I, well, I did. then keep hustling, brother. <laughs> I saw you in Why is it Hulk Hogan in this scenario? <laughs> That's because he wants you to come home, brother. Um, should we get our guests out here? Yeah, for sure. These two clowns. Yeah. We didn't want, the festival made us book these made two. Us. Yeah. Just know when they get out here, it's not by our right. choice. Right. It, unless they do great. Unless they're good, then we had the eye for talent. Mm -hmm. No. The, how would you describe these fun people? Here's how I'd describe them. I think they're wonderful, beautiful spirits. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I think it was super hippie on it. Their spirits are fucking dope as fuck. <laughs> Um, I, I just think they're wonderful, beautiful people. I've known one of them for a long time. I've known mm -hmm. one of them for a less amount of time. Mm -hmm. But I want to be very clear, I love them both equally. Same. Ladies and gentlemen, Kurt Brawler and Heather Give them that pen pal's love! Boom, 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 boom! Boom, 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 boom. Hannah has been on the show. Kurt, first time caller. Woo, man, I got lost in those, in the underground tunnels getting here. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this amphitheater is gigantic. Yeah. Someone gave me a ride Huge. in a golf cart for 15 minutes just to make it to stage. That's right. We told you not to wander back there. I wanted to see the pipes. <laughs> Show me the insulation. These pipes go all the way? Yeah. You go to a major infrastructure, you don't want to know how the water gets around? Come on. <laughs> Kurt got here for a sound check and he goes, someone just show me how it all works. <laughs> how does it all come together? <laughs> Man, well, how, what size HVAC you got in this place? You got a heat pump package on the roof or is it down in the basement? Do you ever meet someone who's a little too young to be like knowing about HVAC and it kind of freaks you out and makes you feel like less of a person? I haven't yeah. thought of one thing during this conversation. I'm like, that's a pretty ball. <laughs> that's sparkly. I it's like really that. It's big. It yeah. does creep you out when like a six year old is like, these are nice curtains. And you're like, what's <laughs> wrong with you? Like, okay, murderer. <laughs> the other day, clearly a murderer. I said to my five year old, I was like, I was disciplining my daughter. She's five years old. And she just looked at me and she said, are you sure you want to continue down this path? Whoa! Wow. Whoa! You got a good son situation. You got little Macaulay little Culkin. Damien. Little Damien on your hand. And I was like, I do not. Who the fuck taught you that? I don't say that. Who says that? That night you put her down and she's like, Dad, you still sleep with your door unlocked? <laughs> That's so fucked good. up. Good. Do you good. Want to continue and then she now? just licked a knife and threw it at the wall. <laughs> and it perfectly yeah. stuck into a photo. Yeah, she goes, I'm going to bed. He's like, you just got up. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need your shit, Dad. All right. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Hannah, welcome back. Oh, hey. Hi. I'm so excited to be here. I'm your guys' biggest fan. I pressured them to put me on the show. <laughs> and now that I'm here, I'm like, meh. Oh, I know. No, I'm just kidding. Because well, you do so many arenas. It's like it's this is all tough. Hat for it's you. tough. It's tough. No, this is <laughs> incredible toxic male energy that I love to be for around. For sure. <laughs> toxic avenging male Especially energy. Especially you with your fucking bomber. What is this? I love this, Jack. What you don't like say? Jackie Robinson? Brooklyn? What do you know about Brooklyn, Jackie Daniel? Robinson? You don't like Jackie Robinson? Oh, Let's guys, not, look who wants to get canceled. About that. Look who Let's wants not, to get canceled. That's a not true. Folks, you heard it here first. Any controversy is good controversy for a True. podcast. No, True. it's not. We don't want that. Not. We want we certain want controversy. You no. want certain controversy. Was he yeah. that good at baseball? I never saw him. I never oh, saw Hannah, him. So getting canceled. Getting, oh, we had some walkouts. Okay. <laughs> oh, man, all of section CC1B just left. <laughs> CC1B, <laughs> the most confusing arena. To be fair, <laughs> to be fair that, that was an obstructed view. Yeah, it that was an obstructed view. Those were the cheaper seats. Right. Have you ever, whenever you walk into an arena and you see someone actively go to a person to ask where their seats are, don't you want to go up and go, what do you not get about the pattern? <laughs> do you really not get that it's a letter, then a number? Go to the letter, but then the number. People take pride in the job to be like, you're going to go four seats that way and to the left. Yeah. And you're going to feel at home. When they come over to me and they go, can I just see your ticket? I go, I know how to get there, okay? I know how to get can there. I, I want to ask you guys an honest question. Yeah. What is your opening line when you get to your seat and someone is in your seat? Oh, good Do question. Do you go with the passive aggressive question? Think, I think. You uh, go, mama's home, get the fuck up. You don't roll that hard. <laughs> There's no <laughs> way you roll that hard. That's what I say. Um, I say, mama's home. <laughs> 
and they just get up automatically. You walk up with your kid. You walk up with your kid. She looks at them and goes, "I don't think you guys want to go down this road." Yeah. Yeah. No, you I sure thought... you want to go down this road? <laughs> you're right. We're actually two seats over. I feel like there's so many times in life that you want to be right, but you're probably wrong. But this is the one time that you're like, "Oh, I know. oh you fucked up, sir. You yeah. fucked up." Yeah. Like on an yeah. airplane where you have to be like. There, you must have been stupid, and um, I, that's how I feel. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like you're so fucking smart because you could read a number in a letter, and this poor human just couldn't figure it out. Yeah, and I don't care what age they are. <laughs> Ninety no. years old. Yeah. What are we doing here, pal? <laughs> Get out of my seat. Mom I paid home. forty. In the Spirit Airlines flight, bitch, get off. <laughs> the worst is when then they show you you're wrong. And they're like, yeah, nope, and you're like, these oh, are ours. I, guess. Yep, I am Trauma. one row. Yeah. You're right, I am one more row. <laughs> yeah, when you start cocking and then you have to be like, I am going to go to the bathroom on yeah. the plane and stay there the whole time. You try, to, you try to derail it a little bit. You're like, oh my God, I am wrong. And oh my it's God, probably a because my brother, my brother just passed away. Yeah. And that's kind of what you're deflecting <laughs> so, so hard. I've been crying all morning, the blur from all the death in yeah. my family. I'm yeah. sorry. <laughs> Oh my God, I just have a hard time right now. I just came from the hospital. I'm, I'm a doctor. I save people's lives. But I had these Elton John tickets, so I yeah. was like, my, I'm here for them. I'm here for them. My question is, do you switch when a couple is like, can my boyfriend sit here? No. If it's the same type of seat, yes. Oh yeah, if it's just, if it's just a lateral move. If it's a lateral move, but if it's like, but you, you go into the middle your... aisle, I'll just be like, so let me get this straight. <laughs> you think I got on early I definitely made sure that I got an aisle seat because I'm six foot four now you would like me to change and sit in a middle seat and if they're like yes then I probably would <laughs> and, but and I the, want them and, to be fully aware of what I'm gonna do for them sure yeah and then the whole flight they're just on their phones anyway so you're yeah. like why did you need to sit yeah. next to each and other and I'm literally yeah. like sitting like this holding myself in yeah, yeah. oh this is the worst <laughs> Should we do it? You want to do it? You guys ready to dance? You guys ready? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're buttered up. Okay. Let's go to the letters! <laughs> you? <laughs> Me. Okay. One guy goes, yeah. Yeah, because yeah. it's People fucking feel great. It. He's feeling it. Yeah. He gets it. He gets it. Do you know it. how hard it was for him to wait for 20,000 people to be quiet so he could be like, yeah. 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 That's impressive. That's very that's impressive. Time. That's incredible timing. Incredible oh, yeah. timing. Yeah. Just really polite. Everybody else, all of your fans are very polite that they would quiet down yeah. perfectly. Yeah. 19,999 of them. Yeah. Yeah. Well, a lot of people say that. They're like, it just doesn't sound like there's that many people at the shows. And we're like, well, then come to one. Come to yeah, one and yeah. find come out. Come to one and find out. Come to one. Yeah. And we just, say it like that. Well, they come to one. Come to one and find out. And then I we lose them as a listener. We, I think it's quality it. over quantity. And I see some large hearts in the crowd. Fuck you know? yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. There's thousands of them. I see some, some people are, are shaking their heads. They're like, absolutely not. I see some symmetrical faces. It's pretty yeah, good. That's what you want. That's yeah. what we want. I see yeah. a cheekbone or two. All right, Rory, you ready? I'm sorry. How fun would it be? <laughs> sorry. How fun would it be if the, the podcast is blown up to the point where you're doing a venue, and let's say it's 5,000 people, sure. mm -hmm. and they treat it like a fucking soccer game. Like there are flags, <laughs> a fire gets lit. That'd be great. Chants are going <laughs> Some white stripes. Ja Rule comes no out. No one can hear anything. Ja Rule is just there. <laughs> he invested. <laughs> You're like, Re let's read a letter, and then it's just the wave for 15 <laughs> minutes going around you, and you're like, we gotta wait for this wave to settle down. People are just hitting balls up in the air. <laughs> you just have to continually get up and just like... <laughs> oh, for the listener at home, Hannah danced so weirdly. Just sweating. Hannah did such a crazy just thing. Just sweating so much at the end of a show. You guys take these podcasts really seriously. Always out of breath. There's one person from a rival pod, and they all start yelling, asshole, asshole. Yeah. yeah. I, went to, I went to Big Ten school once. Anyway, sorry, continue. This isn't WTF. <laughs> Dear Mr. Van Kirk and Mr. Scoville. Wonderful order. Oh, Perfectly wonder, wonder who thought this letter would be good for the show. <laughs> Up top, I'll address that Daniel is in the top spot here. Thank yeah, you. I noticed. He's responsible for provi providing a boost in the old social life for me and many others over the last year and brought a huge light into some dark times during the thick of the pandemic. I'll take it. But not only did he do all that, I experienced the great Rory for the first time during these events, and boy, what a treat you are as well. Well, no, that, 
feels really fucking good to read. <laughs> this, is a, this is a weird uh, letter to read. I wrote this letter, by the way. It sounds like a eulogy. I'm just, I'm just tired of my letter getting passed on. <laughs> Second up top, I started a road trip this morning at 7.30 a.m. and just completed it around 10.30 p.m. and spent 90% of the time working on my Penny and Pallor status. I got through July 2021 to March 2021. There is so much I com commented on out loud, but one point that really stood out and blew my mind. The song I formerly knew as Red Hot Love is indeed Radar Love. Wowza. <laughs> Wowza. I've been meaning... What have you found out? I added that. Wowza. <laughs> I've been meaning to write a letter for a while, but never brought myself to do it until this Pen Pals marathon I just drove through. Thank you, by the way. Made that 14 hours fly. I was fortunate enough to get through middle school and high school mostly unscathed by bullying. There is one incident that stands way out Way out there for me, though. It was 7th or 8th grade, and a girl was kicking me under the table during class. It was pretty annoying, so I took the clear high road and kicked her back. <laughs> <laughs> she immediately screamed, don't kick me. And when I responded with a solid, you did it first, she said, yeah, well, I play sports and you don't. Burn. This is literally what just happened to me and you in the green room. Oh, we'll get into yeah. it. <laughs> My question to you both now all four of you, is do you have a moment that immediately sticks out to you, positive or negative, that a peer said or did to you in middle or high school that left a lasting impression? I wish you well. Dr. B, a.k.a. two-time Big Ten champion, so I did eventually play sports sucka. They wrote sucka. That's not me. <laughs> P.S. What's your go-to road trip snack? I've become quite a Jack Link's jerky gal in recent years. Wow. These guys make the most of their letters. Oh, Hannah, yeah. did you write this letter? <laughs> <laughs> I also love that this guy quit all his life's passions just to prove this one girl wrong to yeah. win two Big Ten titles. Yeah, it's, also, so, it's, it's a, a girl. girl. It's a girl. It's a woman. Oh, it's it's a, a woman. woman. Yeah. Right at the end, oh, that was a re revelation. It's a yeah. woman writing about another yes. woman. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it was way funnier if it was a guy. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, have a, I have a memory that sparks, sparks something. Okay. All right. First grade. Uh, it was the first day of first grade. We were just talking about having memories of first sure. grade. And we were all standing in line, and I'd never met this je kid before. His name was Mike. Were you about to say gentleman? I was about to say little gentleman. <laughs> and I'd never met this little gentleman before. I had never met this fucking six-year-old gentleman. I remember, old gentleman. I remember gentleman. by his top hat and cane. <laughs> <laughs> his monocle. <laughs> his name was Peter O'Toole. Uh, <laughs> he had a pipe. <laughs> <laughs> he turned around. And he just looked at me and went and then yelled squanchy and grabbed my nuts. Whoa! Oh, God! And I thought it was the funniest thing oh, good. anyone good. has ever done. Squanchy. Yeah. And so then I just yelled squanchy and I grabbed his nuts. <laughs> yeah. And then we ran around yelling squanchy together and trying to grab other little boys' testicles. <laughs> But like, you just not the actual. Like, this is how the idea of a fraternity starts. One hundred percent. And then we just squanch it all day. Everyone didn't like it. How do you spell squanchy? We've never spelled it. We didn't spell much then. But I would say <laughs> first grade. I would say S Q U A N C H I. I would love to know squanchy. Squanchy. I would have gone with a Y, but I like the IE. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, it's IE. Yeah, yeah. It's a formal. It's more formal. If you could sure. go back in time and ask him one question, would it be who did this to you? <laughs> <laughs> because that really matters. Squanchy. <laughs> it also might have been, and I didn't know this until like, oh, he moved away when I was 10. He had Tourette's, and I didn't know it, and so I would just mimic him all the time. Oh, no. Um, oh, no. You had Tourette's and by proxy? I would, I, no one told me. After he moved away, my mom was like, have you seen, like, do you know Mike had, has Tourette's? And I was like, what is that? She's like, watch this video. And I was like, oh, like, someone should have told me before he moved You're away. You're like, I just thought he was yeah. quick-witted, and his timing was great. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I just loved everything he did, so I was just, like, mimicking him. And most of it was, like, just ticks. It wasn't like, yeah. he wasn't saying words. It was just like, he'd open his mouth a lot and like clear his throat a lot. And so I was always like, that's the cool way to talk. I love this guy. Yeah, yeah. He grabbed my balls the first moment I met him. Yeah. And that could have gone, gone either direction. Yeah. yeah. You it chose to make it fun. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, so we recame, and so it might have been an involuntary tick that he like turned around and did because it was like a stressful moment, and that's I think comes sometimes. Does that make you feel like I that just the love wasn't as moment. genuine as you thought? I just realized it on stage that it might have been a tick, <laughs> and that I took it and was like, "Yeah, squanchy," <laughs> and grabbed him back, and then we just it ran just, around. And it's and just he's like, like he's like, "Man, you gotta stop, dude. I'm stuck in a loop. <laughs> <laughs> you keep fucking doing this. I keep fucking doing it." <laughs> No, but instead it made it like a thing. It made yeah. it an agreed upon thing as opposed yeah. to a thing like, God. oh, I didn't mean to do that. It was like, now we're like, we're doing it on purpose. You're like, yeah. on Wednesdays, we squanchy. <laughs> that was a Mean Girls yeah. reference, sorry. I love you You're like so pretty. Thank you. Um, mean like, Girls reference. Your hair looks sexy pushback. <laughs> there sorry. we go. Um, I love that. Did, did any of you have a bully? Did you ever have a bully? Yeah. Uh, other, who? I mean, we were comics. I feel like we all were bullied. Yeah. Uh, I think there's some you can tell. You, there's it. some you can tell weren't bullied enough. There's True. some you can tell weren't. Mine, <laughs> mine was... We Dan- all say the same name. Daniel, <laughs> list, list a few of the names. <laughs> well, which comics haven't been bullied oh, enough? the people who were bullied enough? Oh, my God. <laughs> Billy Wayne Davis. Uh, <laughs> um... My bully's name was Jamie Josephowitz. <gasps> That's and, a great name. And he, uh, he was just constantly made fun of the way I walked, made fun of the jeans that I would wear. I remember one time, Kenny, my cousin Kenny, and our friend Bryce and I were walking, and Jamie was just scaring us and chasing us the whole way home. And then he, like, was off to the left and, like, yelled at us, like, I'm going to get you guys. We were so scared of Jamie. Just he Did you a- grow up in the 1950s by any <laughs> chance? I'm feeling a vibe here. Rochelle, Illinois. Rochelle, yeah. yeah. And uh, Bryce was, like, a smaller, uh, he was, like, a pudgy. It also guy. feels like this was in the movie It for some <laughs> yeah. reason. Yeah. I think you're just talking about It. But that I wouldn't remember. Also, uh, <laughs> Stephen King reference there for you guys. Yeah. So, uh... <laughs> Bryce? Bryce is a bully's name. Why Bry- is the little a, one Bryce? He, Bryce Oatman, and he was a sweet little guy, uh, and uh. Bryce just ran. It, but when he took off to run, for some reason, his brain broke, and he ran straight <laughs> at Jamie Josephowitz. <laughs> just like and, a horror movie? Oh. And Jamie Josephowitz <laughs> grabbed him, like, around, like, the neck and started, like, picking him up, right? Oh, and Jesus. Bryce was flailing, and then Kenny goes, we gotta do something, Danny! <laughs> and so... I just ran at Jamie DeSepowitz, and I just, I was such a fan of WWF, I just jumped in the air with both Yes! And I drop kicked Jamie DeSepowitz. Yes! Did you actually drop kick him? Yes, like I, he went yes, down? Yes, and then so he fell to the ground, and then we all got up and ran, yeah. and he chased us. Oh this my is God. This Lord went of on, the Flies. This went on for months with him, and yeah. then... Uh, by the time we got into junior high, I had hit my growth spurt, and we were both on the wrestling team. Also, by the way, Jamie Josephowitz, 40, year, 40 years old at the time, just chasing <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. He was our teacher. Yeah, he was the yeah. teacher. <laughs> the teacher. He's like, these guys could do a little more work. And I was on the, we were on the wrestling team, and I had gotten so much bigger by that point, and I, every day in practice, I would just beat the shit out of Jamie Josephowitz. <laughs> and oh. the guys were like, it's practice, dude. Yeah. It's just practice. Dude, that feels so good. <laughs> yeah. Get yeah. better. Get better. Yeah. Get better. God, he was a perfect guy. What's he doing too? now? He's dead. Okay. Is he really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Well, that, I that's guess he what bullied happens. the wrong bully. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's dead. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how. I, I, I hope he had an okay life up until the How end. do you know that he's dead? It's Rochelle. I, know I still people... feel like you know something you haven't told the authorities. It is like a thing in my family where someone will sit around with the Rochelle news leader and be like, oh my God, guess who died? And they just read the obituaries. Mm. Yeah. You know, you, small town, nobody else is like, you just know who died all I, the time. I think we all probably just read other parts of the newspaper. <laughs> <laughs> the Rochelle News Leader, there's not a lot of other it's parts. It's just an obituary. The all whole right, kids, everybody in the living room, Let's time to who guess died. who died. <laughs> You're not far off. We're all going to do that soon. We're all going to do You're that soon. You're not far off. You're not. I remember also one time. I, I was in fourth grade, and a kid named Mike Tilton also passed away. Mike, oh, my God, Rochelle. Mike, uh, Mike, for some reason, I was like, we're going to fight. But I, I wasn't mad or anything. I just, I was like, we, we're going to fight, you know? You bullied him? But in a way that was like, we should fight each other. And he was like, all right, let's fight. And I'm like, oh, yeah, let's do it. Yeah. And he punched me 
square in the mouth, and I oh. fell to the ground crying my eyes out. Yeah. And uh, the teacher came over and started yelling at him, and I, I couldn't let it. I was like, I told him to fight me, and I was so oh. in so much pain. Yeah. And, and I, that was like, oh, I don't ever want to get hit again. And I very rarely have had it happen ever since. I don't know if I believe that. 100% true. I feel like you chased the drama. No way. I hate fights. The few fights I've been in were the worst. I fought Dale Clark in an alley once. And then I love all the names. In no an one, alley? by the way, in an no alley. one has that sentence. Yeah. <laughs> no one, no one can say, yeah, no, I bought, I fought so and so in an alley once. It sounds like a line from the documentary Dogtown. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it sounds yeah, like I Gotham. fought Dick Dale in the back behind the surf <laughs> shop. Well, I fought him in the alley behind my grandma's house. Me and Dale Clark fought. And then one time he showed up at my cabin on a motorcycle with Paul Reed. And I was like, you get out of here. I with Paul Reed? Reed? Yeah, Paul Reed's a great guy. <laughs> Not Paul Reed! Not Holy clothing shit. designer Paul Reed. <laughs> he's, he's a cop. Paul Reed's a cop. <laughs> Not dead. The first person who's not dead from any of you your stories. You didn't ask he's if Paul cop. Reed was dead. Paul Reed's Paul dead. Paul Reed's probably dead. Is he? He's alive. Uh, <laughs> I've never been so sad to say somebody was alive. Uh, no. But it's surprisingly, he's a patisserie chef. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Real, <laughs> real career. Dead, dead cop patisserie chef. You, yeah. never, you ever had a career bully? shift? You ever had a bully? I, I, I don't know. That means I don't you know were if I've blocked it out. I, I, think I, did, I think I was mean to some kids. Really? I you was, were the I bully. was very small. I was very oh. small. Oh. Uh, I, like and a chihuahua. I, I was a chihuahua-sized child. <laughs> I was a squanchy. <laughs> and um, <laughs> my, uh, my, I come from a big family, and my dad had, you know, he was one of five kids, and everybody constantly throughout my life, like, roasted each other all yeah. the time for sure. any reason possible. Mm -hmm. And I did that oh. all the time even to people that were bigger than me. Mm. And I think sometimes I would do it and, I, and people would laugh and I'd be like, yeah, that's right, that's what we, that's what we do. And I think some people were like, you're a really hurtful person. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't, it, I don't know that it registered with me because I, I think I was just like, well, no, this is what you do. My family does, we all love each other. And yeah. you know, now, thank God I'm a comic because that's all comics do. Yeah. Yeah. But then I could tell it was probably, you know, I think it got to some people. I think about it a lot. I look back and I'm like, I would be one of those people like Adam Sandler and Billy Madison. Like, I have a list of people I wish I could call and be like, you know, I'm not you who I used to be. You just find their biggest insecurity. Really? You're like, I'm a good guy. Your dad never loved you. Yeah. <laughs> That's what they say back. They go, why did you make fun of me? My whole family made fun of each other. That's because they're damaged, Rory. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think about it. I think, like, what is that list of people I could call and just be like, you know, I, I just, I razzed you a little bit, and uh, I wish I didn't do that, but... I did do it. How are things with you? If you <laughs> if you were back home in Greenville and you saw one of those people, would you be? Would you? Feel? I think I would. Yeah, I think it would, I. I mean, it, it might be a little awkward, but there it can't was, hurt. There right? was one kid in uh, that we would like give a hard time to, and I and I, I will say this: I specifically think about it now because my daughter is in first grade, and she's had some things where she like I I took her to a, a birthday party not that long ago. Uh, little boy in her class. And so when you get to the party, it's not most of the people in her class, and it's a lot of little boys and, like, an older... The only other girl was, like, an older cousin. Yeah. And at one point, and I'm like, I don't know any of the parents. Uh, have you been in these settings? <laughs> oh, it's the worst. Yeah, you don't know any of the parents, oh, yeah, and you're like, like, oh, I hey. guess we're here until after cake. I don't know when the exit can happen. It's literally just like, oh, wow, I would love to be around people yeah. I have nothing in yeah. common with. <laughs> other then, than we all have children. <laughs> they all, they, at one point, the, and the boys are like, boy energy is fucking insane. No. And at one point, they're like, the girls are prisoners. Let's play, <laughs> let's play torture. And so I like look to watch to see what this looks like. <laughs> And I see, I see a kid, my daughter's like walking into like the playhouse and I see this kid like kind of push her back like into the playhouse and I go, I'll be right back. I come up <laughs> and other boys come in there and now like all the kids are in there and I go, we're not playing anything called torture and we're not playing anything boys versus girls, okay? We're not. Good, and I, good. And I know the other parents here, but I go, we're not, we're not doing it. And this one kid goes, we can do it if we want. And this kid threw, threw like a ball at me and I caught it. You know, I was a... <laughs> D1, D2 collegiate yeah, yeah, athletes. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
<laughs> that little six-year-old was... throws a ball at me. I'm, a, I'm going, <laughs> I'm catching Rory, it. I am riveted by this yeah. story. I caught it. I'm not joking. I caught it, and I threw it back pretty quick. And he kind of, it kind of missed him. And only then did I go, oh, I can't. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. You know, Sorry. I just, something, now, bitch. something kicked in and I saw one kid yeah. push my daughter. And so right now I'm in a place. <laughs> yep. Right. You're and then they all, bear mode. You're yeah. mama bear. You are defending. <laughs> <laughs> they all like left the, the playhouse and I'm kind of watching, like watching them the rest of the time. And then not that long ago, uh, my daughter, Ellie, she was at school and she was like, yeah, so and so like hit me at like at recess, <laughs> and we were like, "Did you tell him to not hit you?" And she goes, "Yeah." And they're like, "Did he hit you again?" And she was like, "Yeah." And we're like, "Did you tell an adult?" And she was like, "No." And we're like, "Well, that's the, either you're gonna hit him or you're gonna go tell an adult, but you got to do one of something." Right. And I, I like tell you, she was like, like bothered by it. You left it up to her. Yeah. Either tell an adult or fucking clock him. Yeah. yeah. Your yeah. choice, six or, year old. Yeah. Real power move. Yeah. <laughs> hit the real power move. Yeah. Hit that kid, then go. Tell an adult what you just did. Yeah. yeah. That's so yeah. sorry. I, I hit yeah. this try. I had that happen to me at a Carvel. I was like three. Carvel. Right? Throw yeah, back. Carvel. Incredible. Underrated. And a little boy, you know how the little toddlers come up to me and the parents are just watching awkwardly. And he gave me this like sweet hug. And I just fucking right hooked <laughs> this dude. And my parents were. This is when you were a child. I was 22. He was four. <laughs> no, no, we were you did the we were right thing. Like four years old, <laughs> and, and you rocked my this parents kid? were so embarrassed. Like this kid, like oh, KO'd, and the dad of the kid turned and goes, "I'm proud of her because he did not ask for consent." Oh, and these fucking lips. <laughs> These fucking cups. It's fucking cups. Can I, can I ask you a question? Slope in the night. Can I ask you a question? <laughs> Women power, third wave feminism. Fuck you. Right I'm after. The rocky road. Right after he said that, did he wink at your mom? <laughs> Was he like, right? Yeah, I asked right? for consent. Did you hear what I said, like, you hear what I said about it? I asked for consent. Yeah. <laughs> and his wife was like, you never say stuff like that at home. Can I get you guys He's a like, freak? babe, shut up. <laughs> My son didn't ask for consent, like, right? Can I buy you a freak Can I have a vanilla? Course? He goes, you're not eating tonight unless I decide so. <laughs> I, that, kids are so fucking funny. I remember when I'm, I'm the friend that, like, I, I want kids to like me. Which sure. is the worst for babysitting. Yeah. Like, I like want to be cool. I'm like, yeah. I'll let you do whatever. Yeah, yeah, you want to smoke the, weed? Yeah. This girl was like six, and my <laughs> friends were like, go play in the pool with her. And I'm like, I'll be great. I'm going to kill it. I'm like, what do you want to do? Play sharks and minnows? And she goes, let's play I'm drowning. And I go, absolutely <laughs> not. And she's like, I'm drowning. I'm drowning. She wouldn't stop. Yeah. And my friends were like, you're done. You're done with this yeah. game. Yeah, but to be fair, if you'd been like, you want to drown? <laughs> that game will end I'm, real fast. <laughs> yeah. Like, that's a very quick game that isn't going to look work long term. We have three hours to burn here, girl. Yeah. So yeah. Is Let's there... play I'm floating in the pool dead. How does that feel? Oh, too dark? I apologize. Sorry, guys. There is... I, I, we'll hit one last super but there really is few things that break my heart as severely and as quickly as any child that you, that you love or you think is so cool telling you they're being bullied. Because you're like, you're fucking... Yeah. Like, it, a, a couple of my nephews are going through this right now, and I, I was just home, and uh, my nephew was telling me, he's like, yeah, kids pick on me. And I'm trying to, like, say, like, do you know why they do that? Because somebody's picking on them. And then my nephew was like, yeah, because he's only mean if someone's mean to him. And I was like, yeah, that's his problem. But, like, having a kid that you love, if it's a shitty kid, like, you pick on him, right? Yeah, like, who cares? Yeah, for but, sure. like, a kid Thank you, you love, for your courage, you Daniel. <laughs> Thank you for that courage. <laughs> like a kid goes, a kid Next. goes, wouldn't it be crazy if a kid was like, I get picked on a lot, and you're like, yeah, I get that. Yeah. yeah. I see that. I'm and on Jamie's dude. team, actually. <laughs> but talk about bullying. No one bullies worse than an honest child to your face. Oh, my God. <laughs> and one time, in my, my uh, aunt and uncle's cul-de-sac, right, this little kid, he was like, who are you? This is how he, he was like, who are you? And I go, I'm Kenny. And that's my cousin. I'm just fucking with the kid. I go, I'm Kenny. We met He goes, no, you're not. I go, yeah, I'm Kenny. He goes, no, you're the fat one. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, how old are you and how old is he? <laughs> I was maybe 30. And this kid was maybe 9, 10 yeah. years old. And I was yeah. like... 
And you can't think of a comeback. There is none. There is none. Yeah. There is none. My daughter Your just balls are tiny. Right. right. So I oh yeah, kid. I fuck. Yeah. I fuck. I fuck. Okay. Let's be very clear. I fuck. I fuck. I fuck. Do you not you know what I that is? Fuck? You don't. Let me explain. Oh, what fucking is? I fuck oh, this you week. Understand what I do? You want to go I through? Last month. Fuck yeah. you. You want to go through my DMs? Yeah. You want to see what you I get in? Let me, get out, let me get out my body, my life. This is a vagina. Yeah. This is a penis. Let me show you who I fuck. And you know what? When your parents get a divorce and they're gonna, it is your fault. It's your I don't fault. I care what they tell you. Yeah. And the parents are just on the porch. <laughs> Kenny! He's right. Is that Kenny? Thank you. Thank you for thinking I'm Kenny. Is that fat Kenny no, over there? Just, that must be fat Kenny. <laughs> Uh, last thing, what's your go-to road trip snack? I'm sure we can do this in 30 oh. minutes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, can I, here's, here's one thing I do. When I have to stop and go to the bathroom, I don't know why. I go into the gas station, I'm not getting gas. Right. I don't have an intention of buying anything. Sure. Just need to use the bathroom. <laughs> but as soon as I'm done in the bathroom, I do the walk the aisles pretending I'm right. looking for something <laughs> right. that they just don't have. It's and then I leave. No oh. one has ever gone to a gas station, looked around no. and been like, I guess they don't have it here. No, I guess you don't have caviar. <laughs> it's gas station window shopping. You're like, if I hated myself a little more today, I would fuck you yeah. up. See, you guys gonna... don't sell any Branzino here? <laughs> <laughs> All right. This Whole is gonna, frozen Branzino. This is going right, to well, like, it's gonna seem like pandering, but that is the joy of Bucky's in Texas. Because yeah. you have they, they know why you're there. It's the bathroom. Yeah. And there's, it's always so confusing. <laughs> Everything, there's like people People getting legal separations inside. <laughs> There's so many things happening that they me. don't care. You go in, shit your brains out, and leave. They're like, thanks. If you ever want to work here? We start at 22. Yeah. Thank you, sure you for the to... deposit. Are you sure you don't want a 64-ounce Red Bull to take with you? Right. You don't like our tie-dyed slogan shirts? <laughs> you don't want a 62 by 62 painting of a horse? <laughs> okay. I guess you, okay, then. I guess you don't like turquoise crosses. <laughs> <laughs> I saw one, which was it was a it was a knife. It was a pocket knife that was a gun. <laughs> so it was in the shape of a gun, but it was a knife. You would just like pull yeah. a knife out. It wasn't a real gun. My favorite. It was just the shape. Nothing would be more fun than a switchblade where you like hit the button and the knife comes yeah. out, but a gun comes out and you have to grab that part of it. <laughs> it's like you hit the button. Oh, oh. <laughs> My favorite, the most hat. cumbersome thing to have in your pocket. <laughs> my favorite hat I ever saw, it just said, uh, this is my crown of thorns. And, and I'm it was like, just a hat? Yeah, a trucker hat. And I was like, is that anti-Jesus or pro-Jesus? Pro yeah. This is my crown of thorns. And also, do you hat. not, do you not like... <laughs> it really is. Do you not like hats? Really? Yeah, I just want a hat. Are they under says. the impression Jesus wanted to wear the crown of thorns? Like he that goes, he well, kept the sun out of his eyes. It's Jesus is Coachella. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Although if any of us saw any of our comic friends wearing a black trucker hat with gold lettering that said, this is my crown of thorns, I'd be like, that's a great I'd be like, hat. ironic. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so ironic. funny. And they're like, what do you mean funny? You're like, yep. yep. Uh, all right. <laughs> Favorite snack? Favorite snack? Favorite snack? Okay, I get naughty. I feel like I live life on the edge, and I'll look at that old taquito and I say, you're Ooh, mine. Yeah. You're mine. I, I like that. Because it's better for the story when I'm going to get a granola bar. Thank I'm, you. The, I'm the person at the airport that I'll be like, lobster bisque. Let's see what you're going to do to me. Hell yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah, Detroit. Hell yeah, Detroit. Like, I don't like knowing my future. I yeah. want to see where it goes. I, if I'm on a long road trip, this is the only time I've ever done. I'll get I'll get a little package of ho hos, and I oh. love it. Oh my god! When you just don't give a fuck, you got those and obviously some Reese's Pieces. Reese's those Reese's are the best. best. Can I tell you an adorable story before Kurt gives his answer? Yeah. I was on a road trip doing stand up with Gilbert, my buddy Gilbert, and uh, we we go to the bathroom in the the gas station. He's done, and like he I, we we meet back in the car. Yeah. And I go, Gilbert, I got a little something. And he goes, what? And I go, got you a little Ben and Jerry's ice cream thing. And he goes, dude, I got you a Ben and Jerry's <gasps> ice cream thing. Wait. And I'm not Wait. joking. Like, we almost kid. I was almost like. <laughs> <laughs> you know that, like, look right yeah, there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you go, you're, you're doing this? You have something on your, on your hair. Yeah. <laughs> you have something, you have something on your that lips that I can only get with my lips. That I'm feeling. <laughs> 
sudden and you just raise it up a little. <laughs> and out of nowhere, I just like put hair behind my ear that's not yeah. there. This is so God can't hear. <laughs> and then you go, can I try yours? Yeah, spoon it. And then we just ate one of them together, threw the other one out. Ben and Jerry's isn't, it's not good for you. <laughs> Kurt? Kurt, uh, what's pr- yours? Pr- Pringles. Pringles? That's what, what are we going on? with? Pringles. My peanut cream. butter crackers. I what are you going with? What flavor? What? Uh, sour, sour cream. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay. come on, green. My yeah. question, I haven't eaten Pringles since a child. You're a large man. Can you fit your wrist into the Pringles bottle? Oh, I dump it. I dump it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You deep throat the Pringles bottle? No, sometimes. <laughs> no, I'll, I'll leave it in. I'll just dump it into a cup of water, let it dissolve into its constituent mass. <laughs> and then, drink it. And then I just straw. drink it. A straw. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just driving down the road, drinking it while urinating and please, drinking a Red Bull. Please put that in something. <laughs> that's, that's a moment where that should be in something. <laughs> and not explain it as a joke. And don't even edit it to be a punchline. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's on the Cooking Network. Mm. This is crazy. I've never seen someone more embarrassed of Pringles than Kirk. Like, ah, <laughs> Pringles. Uh, he Pringles. goes, Pr- uh, I was Pringles. like, I know it ain't funny, but uh, that's Pringles. what I like. I'm Sorry, not going to lie. So you've never had a single Pringle? You've never been able to... No, I think I lift them with my tongue. Yeah. yeah. All right, and that's why I think they have that shit. Yeah, like a cat. Like a cat. <laughs> like all right, all right. Here we go. Wrapping <laughs> it up. Over Dr. B. Fist in the tube. <laughs> Travel safe out there. I'm, I'm well aware this letter's from the past, and that road trip is already over. But uh, we wish you well. Sincerely, your pen pals, Rory Scoville, Daniel Van Kirk. Pan a burner. <laughs> Hey, pen pals, Hub City cookies are still here for you to enjoy. You guys have made these cookies such a huge success. And one, I hope it's because you trusted me. And two, I hope it's because you are loving these cookies as much as I am. In fact, I see your social media posts. You are loving them. That makes me so happy. Well, guess what? We have some special editions coming out this summer. And I'm going to tell you about two of them right now. The first one is Hub City Father's Day cookies. So this launches on June 10th, and they're going to sell out. So go to 3bestbakery.com on June 10th. Make sure you get in your order for Father's Day cookies. And then on June 24th, we have the launch of the 4th of July special edition Hub City cookies. You obviously can always get yourself the little circular stacks with the great little uh, purple sand sugar on them, that little white frosting, which is also my family's recipe. I don't know if I say that enough. The whole thing from the frosting to the cookie and the sand sugar, that's all the Van Kirk family recipe. Uh, the little purple and white is a little Hub City colors. So go to 3bestbakery.com if you want to get your Father's Day cookies on June 10th and then to get your 4th of July cookies. Those launch on the 24th. Orders go out a few days after for each one of those, but I don't want any of you to miss out. If you haven't tried these cookies yet, I say this with the most truthfulness I can give about anything ever. You're going to love them. So get them before they sell out. Go to 3bestbakery.com right now to get yourself some stacks or on the 10th on the 24th to get yourself either Father's Day cookies or 4th of July cookies. Sincerely, I wish you well. Bye. And we're back! <laughs> Kurt, kind of weird to witness that, isn't it? That it's immediate. That, it is a little disappointing. That was TV magic. <laughs> it is disappointing to see that that's the level of space between those moments. Yeah, yeah. that's all you need. Uh, Kurt? Yes. Tell everybody where they can find you, what you're up to, and what you have going Guys, on. Guys, why don't you listen to the Bananas podcast, all right? It's strange news mixed with personal storytelling. We just had Charlize Theron on. Uh, it's a great show. You'll enjoy it. Me and Scotty <laughs> Landis. so shocking. What? We just had Charlize Theron on. We did. We're like, wow, Jesus Christ. Yeah. Is it Theron or Theron? Uh, it is Th- It's Theron in <laughs> South Africa. Yeah, yeah. Wow. yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like, you can say Theron, Theron. She's it like, matter. it's uncultured, however you imagine. Yeah, she say says it. You doesn't, it doesn't matter how you yeah. say it. Yeah. yeah, she's always like, it doesn't matter. Do you have any dates coming up? Uh, yes, I have a bunch. Uh, Denver, we're doing bananas at, uh, at Comedy Works, December 7th and 8th. We'll be in Asbury Park July 14th at House Independence. We'll be at the Bell House July 17th. I'll be in San Diego June 17th at Soda Bar. And uh, May 19th to the 22nd, I'll be at the DC Comedy Loft. It's incredible it. you Love remember it. that. Hannah? I didn't realize I could. That was incredible. Um, where can people, where can, what's happening? That was Laura? Jesus. Um, uh, where can people buy this shirt? Um, okay, so I'm wearing my merch. 
<laughs> it's not out yet. Oh. I did wear it. It is great. It is great. I wear oh, this cool. outfit. Yes, yeah. thank you. Because I'm sick of wearing band shirts. I don't know the, any songs of them. So I'm like, this is my voice on a podcast. Yeah. Um, Wait, I can't read Rory, it. Can you read it? This is my time. And you're like running around. I can't a, hear you right now. You're making it about you. <laughs> I'm pouring water down here. <laughs> um, yeah, I have a Giggly Squad podcast. We have listen to. Also, when guys do these festivals... Rory has fun with his shirt. You actually look nice. Besides you three, most guys wear the same outfits, I feel like, all the time. Yeah. And it's hot in Austin, and I only wore one, thank you, one skirt, and it's all sweat over here. And I'm not wearing <laughs> jeans on stage, and I'm wearing the skirt all fucking week long. We're bonding over this right now, me and you. I feel it. Yeah. Because the sweat and it's going just down a dude my back. In a kilt. It's not another woman. <laughs> <laughs> He's got like bagpipes. He's like, I hear you. I hear it. Air out the balls. Um, but yeah, follow me on Instagram at Hannah Burner. Love it. I'm actually going to Comedy Works on Sunday, but nice. this won't come out in time probably. No. That's it. Okay. Oh yeah, I, whatever. Never mind. When does this drop? Do we know? This I think will drop, drop in 2023. First, so all of your dates are fucked. <laughs> yeah. So none of that matters at all. Yeah. And some of us will be dead by then. If, just <laughs> in proximity to Daniel. Uh, like the third or fourth week of May. <laughs> What's that? Third or fourth week of May. Okay. Well. <laughs> June 3rd, Daniel Van Kirk, first episode of Physical, yeah, is baby. in it. Yes, star. <gasps> yes. That's so exciting. Apple TV Plus. Yeah, and Rory's in it, too. will be a trailer out soon. I don't know when. Yeah, probably be a trailer. And then out um, if this comes up before then, we'll be at the Come and Take It Comedy Festival. We're both headlining and doing a live Houston. 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 Yeah. Uh, come and Take It Comedy, htx.com, or everything else is up at danielvankirk.com. Rory, do you have a website yet? I have a website. It's roryscoville.com. There's nothing of interest <laughs> okay. uh, there. Yeah. <laughs> My website is eight years out of date. That's exactly right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, uh, that's me as well. All right, you ready for this? Yep. There we go. Dear best friends, longtime listener, first time penciler. As of writing this, I am a paller. Actually, I am a hashtag pound pal. I love you both. But enough about you, let's get to this letter. In November of 2019, my wife left me. I, I didn't want a divorce, so no fun, obviously. I also had a falling out with my very best friend and the best man at my wedding of 20 plus years around the same time. He said some very cruel things to me and it was absolutely devastating. He ended up living with my ex. I don't think anything happened between them, but who knows? It did. I moved into my sad dad pad in January of 2020, the same month my wife was already in a different committed relationship. While trying to deal with all this, the world exploded. With the pandemic, I had no support system to get me through the hardest, darkest part of my life. I was literally suicidal every single day for almost nine months. A bright spot was, in late January, I met Alice, not her real name, on a dating app, and we sort of became pandemic partners. But I knew I wanted to work on myself and didn't want to commit to anything, especially just coming off a divorce. We had plenty of F2F, that's face to face, moments, and I was always completely honest and clear with her. Flash to two years later. I worked on myself and I'm doing worlds better. Me and Alice stayed together, though non-committed. I knew she loved me and I didn't love her, at least not like she loved me. But I was selfish and it felt good to be wanted and not alone. In a flash of selfishness and loneliness, I committed to Alice, a woman I knew wasn't right for me. We moved in together. After only two months, I knew it was a mistake. We didn't see the world the same, and I just didn't feel for her what she feels for me. I wish, I wish so, so much that I did. I meditated on it, and I knew I had to have the hardest F2F of my life. Literally, the day I was going to do it in straight-up movie fashion, she says, I have something to tell you. Let me go first. I am pregnant. Well, shit. I obviously, guys, that's... At this point, it's weird that he changed her name. Yeah, that's me. The I mother... Mean, no! He's like, I think we need another F2F. Yeah, yeah. Anyways, what were you going to say? <laughs> Nothing at all. I obviously didn't say anything after that. I am 41 and tired and have... <laughs> I get it. <laughs> you know what the saddest part? I get it. Kurt, this, Kurt wrote this letter. <laughs> <laughs> I am tired. <laughs> I am 41. Oh my God, I can't The be... reason that that's funny, I want to tell this pen pal, is because it's so honest. That's <laughs> so what honest. makes it funny. It's so just... Yeah. That's why moment. everyone connected with it. They're like, yeah, yeah. I get that. Yeah. 
Yeah. I am 41 and tired and have two boys and have two boys who are my entire heart and oh. never planned on having more kids. Yeah. She has a daughter from a past relationship. I was open about not wanting any more kids. She decided to keep the baby, which is 100% her call, and I have absolutely no beef with that at all. I learned through my second son that the heart is capable of an infinite amount of love. Just watch the Grinch. And I know in my heart. Wait, did he not like the son at first? <laughs> what is he doing? Wait, no, people have this fear. Have you talked? People have a fear when they have a second child. They're like, how am I going to love my second child as much oh, as I do my first? Oh, I just thought he came out and you're and, like, not and this I, guy. I, I, I had a couple friends have Put this very back. real conversation where one was afraid of that. And my buddy goes, dude, I had the same feeling. Your heart just multiplies. See, it is I think it parents always have favorites. Or at least my parents I think, lied yeah, to me. I'm definitely my mom's favorite. Yeah, but I she, am too. I don't think they... I don't have a favorite. I have... It's Give it time. It's for like different uh, categories, you know? Yes. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. oh, for a long car ride, this one. <laughs> for like just tickling, this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's so... That's a great thing <laughs> That makes sense. That makes so much sense and is also beautiful. Like, I, I love that. That's maybe the most... Those two examples are both so adorable. Right. Tickling is your wife. Tickling is this one. Cut. Rub an ice cream on their face, this one. Give an old footy rubbies, this one. Cut to five years. Dad, I just noticed, like, you don't really tickle me the way you tickle my siblings. Like, yeah, well, that's not really our thing. Yeah. Cuddling this one. Choking this one. Yeah. Yelling at that one all the time. Push comes to shove, and I gotta eat one to survive this one. Hell, Rory, pushing and shoving that one. That's true. My dad would always be like, your brother does have thick earlobes. You never know. <laughs> Okay, the heart is, I, learned, I learned that the heart is capable of an infinite amount of love, and I know in my heart I will love this baby. But I am having a baby with someone I don't think I want to be with. I am having a baby at a time I don't have the energy or time or money to do it. I feel stuck. I have panic attacks almost every day. I take Lexapro, and it has buckled under the gravity of this situation. I feel... <laughs> Lexapro was like, I quit. <laughs> yeah. I like the idea that Lexapro has its own abilities to do things. Right. And Lexapro it's just like, too much. Going, too much. Too much. I'm shutting I'm down. I'm underpaid, and I'm over-delivering. Lexapro, <laughs> Lexapro handed in its I can weeks. do 200 pounds of sadness. This is 500 pounds. Lexapro I can't going, do this. This is above my pay grade. I'm out. I feel lost and hopeless, and I just wish I knew what to do. The amount of guilt I feel when I think of separating the children just for my own happiness is overwhelming. Should I just stay? Should I put my boys through another separation? Should I work on cracking the whole time travel thing? I really whiffed it. Truly lost. Your friend, Chowda. P.S. I made you some art. I hope you dig it. P.P.S. Thank you for getting me through that tough year. Your stand-up and podcast played no small part in getting me through it. In a time with no friends, I felt like I had to in both of you. Thank God for jokes. What would we be without them? So guys, wow. what would we be without jokes? And that's all we're going to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, the that universe... That good to me. <laughs> Here, you can see the artwork. Everybody can take a gander oh, wow. at the He's artwork. Oh, very talented. Yeah, it's good. It's Giving you guys quite the jawline. Um... <laughs> I do think the universe works in weird ways where the universe is like, oh, Sexual. you're lonely? I'm going to throw someone in your house you don't like and get a baby coming through. That is wild. That is wild, though. That is ever, such you, a tough situation. Don't you always hear when someone goes, um, uh, God, God wouldn't have given you that much to carry if, you didn't think if, you if could God didn't think you couldn't yeah. carry it. And you're just like, that is, it, because that works in all scenarios, <laughs> yeah. shut the fuck up. Right. Well, shut that's, up. That's, Tig's, that's Tig's whole bit when all that shit was going yes. down with her. And yes. she goes, I feel like God was up there and the angels were like, hey God, I think Tig's kind of had enough with the mom and the relationship and the cancer. And then God's like, no, no, no. She can take a little bit more. She's stronger. I mean, she it's thinks. a perfect fucking bit. But oh, here is the thing. I know God, it's so easy to like how to tell your friends to break up and never yourself. Yeah. But you almost wish like if you want to go like go back in time travel, just go back to the moment where you do say it immediately after she says she's pregnant. Yeah. yeah. Because it either could affect the future she's deciding she wants to have or also at the same time like let her know the score. I know it's going to be devastating, but you were just devastated to like yeah. yeah. Don't you? Is yeah. that the worst time to go? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Here's my thing, and then you do it all at once. Yeah. You can't abandon yourself. 
He has to do what's best for him. I, I'm I'm 50 50 on this because my thought immediately is with the child. Do you sure. know what I mean? Sure. Of like wanting to have some, like you just to have a, a to, second parent I around. Want to tickle. Yeah. I want to tickle him. <laughs> and so, but if you do, if you really, it would be a bummer to have a dude around as, a gr- as you're growing up who didn't want to be there. Exactly. Like right. that might be more damaging than if you just said, let's end it so that she can actually find someone and let the who kid grow up her, with real love. Yeah, to grow up with real love and see an example of that because otherwise that's going to be the example of like what a relationship is. Uh, where it's like, oh yeah, my, my, my dad hated my mom, and so I guess that's what I'm gonna look for, yeah. whoever hates me. That's when people are always like, oh, we're staying together for the kids. I'm like, have you asked the kids if they like that? Yeah. yeah. Like, have, they, have you asked them if they like mom and dad don't sleep in the same room, barely talk to each other, and never cooperate on everything? Are yeah. they digging that hey, vibe in the house? Yeah. my marriage, and we're doing just fine. <laughs> <laughs> She won't. She hasn't answered any of my calls since I've been in Austin. <laughs> but we're good. We're in a good spot. What if right when she goes, I'm pregnant, he just immediately went, I don't love you. Your turn. <laughs> I, mean, I don't love you at all. I never have. Your turn to talk. I thought you said you're a jerk. <laughs> yeah. You're a jerk and I hate you. Sorry. But honestly, on the, on the other side that I feel like, ah, can you maybe learn to love anybody? Uh, oh, that just got you? meta dark. Can you? I don't think Maybe? so. Maybe. Like, what do you think mean? So. Can you? You can. You think you can? You're learn saying, to does love anyone them? love anybody yeah. ever? Where if you, if you're committed enough, if you're committed enough, you're like, for this kid, I'm gonna make this work. Could you do it? But I then don't know. you're doing the opposite of what Hannah said. Where it's like you gotta live for yourself. So yeah. you're saying I'm not going to live for myself at all. Yeah. I'm just well, gonna. What I you think... do when you're a fucking parent anyway? <laughs> just like my life's over. I do it the same. I'm so speaking. That's true. <laughs> and I only have one kid, and that's true. Yeah. I'm speaking from someone with no kids, so I'm like, live your best life, be independent. <laughs> yeah. Hannah's Yolo. coming from Miami. Yolo. Yolo. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And they're like, it's we're done the second it comes out. So I love a tired man in his forties though. Like that's, my you? <laughs> that's how I met my man. He was so tired. <laughs> and he just fell in my lap and I said, Shh, it's gonna be okay. Go to sleep. Is it's that, like, are you saying that us two clowns have like an attract like we look a little attractive because we're just I'm obsessed down with both and... of you. <laughs> no, guys that you're even like guys in their twenties are like Labrador retrievers, they're like <laughs> And you, it's just, I don't like that energy. You like the guys. He knows what he's doing. Also, like, I don't even, you don't have to fuck for 24 hours a day. Like, that means you're poor. That means you don't have a job. Like, I want a rich, <laughs> or, busy man. Or you're in porn. <laughs> and you do have a job. And you do have to Why fuck. Why are you acting like you have sex all day? Do you have sex all day like that? Do I have sex all day? <laughs> <laughs> I wish. Um, if my wife said we're going to have sex for 24 hours a day, I'd be like, <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I've, I've always wanted to try it, but now that, now that we're here, I, I don't know if I can do it. I would say 36 minutes in, I'd be like, I'm tapping out. I have not, and this is, I'm willing to say this, I have not lasted 36 minutes. <laughs> Co- collectively. Oh, no, that would Collectively. <laughs> As a girl who's 30, I know I look like I'm 22. As a girl who's 30, I was gonna say you're, you're attracted to the dad and the son. Do you know what I mean? And you can choose. It's like go. I mean, no, 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 no. I do know what she means. <laughs> like there's the, the 45 and the 25. You could go both yeah. ways. It's tr- quite confusing yeah, for my dude. vagina. Yeah. But I feel like you know when you're going. Oh, sorry. I love talking about this. You go to like a, um, adopt a dog. You can get that a puppy, and that puppy's cute, but it's annoying, and eventually it's not going to be cute. Yeah. Or you get that older dog yeah. that you know its personality already. It smokes a cigar. It, smokes, <laughs> it tells you stories about the yeah. 80s. It's, woof, it's, woof. It's, it's in that poker painting. It's <laughs> one of the dogs from that painting. Yeah, I knew the dealer. I knew the dogs that played pool, too. He goes, yeah, I've seen a lot come and go, and um, no one's caught my eye just yet. All right, I'm going to ask you. What should they, what should Chowda do? What should happen? Mm-hmm. Chowda. Uh, you know, I, here's here's I get that. I get that. There's a level of guilt that you have because you think about the the children and what it means to them. I gotta say, I've never said like if someone said, "Is this an indie movie where when she <laughs> says she's pregnant, that guy just grabs his two kids, gets in the car, and they just leave?" leave. Yeah. That's a movie. That sure. is a movie where he's like, "I know what I've done." I don't know where we're going. 
here's what, here's what I, we're doing. I'm not saying do that. I'm just saying it makes me think it's a really good start to a movie. But I think at the end of that movie, he goes on a cross-country journey with his two kids, learns something about himself, comes back, and then is a father to that other child, uh, right? That'd be nice. But he's been he, this woman for two years. My thing is this. Whatever seems very hard for you to do right now is eventually going to happen. You are not going to marry this woman. You guys are in a relationship, and you do not want to... You didn't want to be tethered to her anymore. You were ready to end it. Yeah. You now are tethered to her forever. Yeah. So that is going to have to operate in a vacuum. Right. Not that it won't affect yeah. other parts of your life, but that is that tether is always going to be there. But yeah. you have to clearly tell her... I will love this child. I know that for a fact. I will co-parent with you and raise it as good as I can with the other ones I'm having. Yeah, and so but supportive. The us, the us thing is not going to be a factor, and you deserve to have an us with someone who feels the way you feel about me, uh, about I, you. I really that beautiful, Daniel. like that. I yeah. like that, because yeah. then you can just be like... We're going to be in a partnership that's we, non-romantic. We, we, we always do. Yeah. Because that's essentially what's going to happen eventually after you have children anyway. <laughs> you're right. You're right, though. But We're going right, to be in a working sure. relationship yeah. and I think, I to think... make sure children don't die. Yes. <laughs> I yes. would say the crowd agrees with Daniel because when I yeah. said the get in the car and leave thing, no one clapped. <laughs> no, no one clapped. No one clapped. No one clapped well, they that. wanted to see how that movie would play out. That's why. <laughs> but to have like the, them be cool with each other and live yeah. next door, yeah, and then be able to see each and you have a that's barbecue fine. together, but you yeah. no bone in. That's fine. And if that person goes, "Fuck you, I can never do that," then you go, "That is your." your choice you, of how no, to yeah, operate yeah. in this situation, but it's yeah. my responsibility to give you the lay of the land yeah. here. Also and if this... you want to live it on with me, wonderful. If you don't, I can't force that. Just like I can't force how I wish I felt about yeah, it. Yeah, let's, let's also be very clear. This is a one-sided letter. That There's a chance she was like, I'm pregnant, and I wish to fucking God I was. I right. thought she you was going to say, I thinks. don't like you. Yeah. She might be like, I don't want to fucking, do, not, not have, like, she wants to have the baby. She might be like, I don't want to fucking do this yeah. either. I know, but there's how, a chance. You how don't many know. times have you ever broken up with somebody and they were relieved? Almost never. It makes right? you hotter when you break up with them. Even if they didn't like you How that much, then they have to like you. How many people do you think I've broken up with? Look at <laughs> <laughs> I'm, wearing, I'm wearing this shirt and it's still <laughs> great. <laughs> you look great. <laughs> Who do you oh think God, I've said, it. look, I can do better, Rory? <laughs> if, you, if you really made me guess, Rory, I would think you have broken up with one person. I think that is maybe the truth. What yeah. did they do? I, it wasn't good. It was bad timing. I just didn't think about the timing. and I. You were like, up. I will help you up off that cliff but I need to talk yeah. to you <laughs> yeah I just think if Chowd is having panic attacks every day That's, already I think about that and panic attacks I, I heard in therapy is like when your authentic self is not connected yes. with your who you what you're being right now. Yeah. So this is just going to... His, his, his heart is telling himself to run out. Yeah. It's literally like a lion being chased. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So as someone with no kids, so take this with a grain of salt. Peace. Peace. You're, you're going to... what He has like at least 40, 50 years left. You, you're on this earth for one time unless you believe in past lives, whatever. Live, try to find... Be supportive and find a real love of your life. Be, or right, love yourself. If you can yeah. be supportive, that's the main yeah. thing. Be yeah, supportive. Yeah, yeah. You don't because have to become a dick too, just because you yeah. leave her. If you are having daily panic attacks, and this is weighing on your heart and your mental health that much, yeah. it's not just even the relationship with this mother and this child, it's going to affect your relationship with the other mother and the other children and the type of person you can be there for them. The... Yeah. the, the the hardest work you do to seek happiness within yourself will bleed over into the other relationships yeah. you have in your life. Yeah. Like, you, you've got, do it, you want to talk about, oh, should I just do it for this kid? Yeah, the thing you should do for your kid is be honest with the other people in your life and with yourself and seek, we always say this, we're not professionals, but seek <laughs> therapy, find a place to talk to, get all those emotions out, have a way to healthily process everything, yeah. and then you'll see that pay dividends in all areas of your life, just not the problem one that's, yeah. It is crazy nuts. when you, your mind, you'll tell yourself something, but your body won't let your mind but, play tricks yeah, it's on an it. It's like, Kelly song. Yeah. <laughs> my, my problematic, problematic, no, it's problematic. problematic. How, second time I got canceled this pod. Okay. Um, <laughs> you set me up. I'm sorry. And, you, and I'm just falling for it. Fuck. Okay, so yeah, his body is literally telling him to get out right. while his he's telling his mind, you're going to be fine, you're going to be fine. Uh, no offense, guys in their 50s, you're in heart attack territory. That man, sure. you need to get out or yeah, your body sure. yeah. is going to implode. Yeah. Yeah, 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 let's be fair, he's 41, so <laughs> let's not just jump to him being in his 50s already. Yeah. I take a little issue with that. Yeah. 
You know, I, I mean, I don't know if everybody got in their he's, 40s he's, or heart attack ready to explode. He was physically deteriorating at this <laughs> yeah. point. I mean, that is true. He, he has, has weird sciatica, the arthritis. It's geriatric territory <laughs> yeah. at this point. Well, also, keep in mind when someone says you only live once, we don't really know if that's true. So when someone, hey, we only live once, it's like, well, uh, do yeah. we? Yeah. <laughs> do we? What do, do you we? know? Do what we? do you know? Speaking of full circle creepy children, there's this TikTok thing where parents record their kid in the background saying like, do you remember and say something about the Civil War? That, and they're like four years old. You heard that shit? Anyway. What? Sorry, I uh, watched Anna, that. Anna, Anna, <laughs> Anna, I've told you this before. You can say what you want to say, but you have to write a letter in like everybody else. Yeah. <laughs> I said backstage, I go, stay on topic. Yeah. In the la- we are on the one yard line. Right. Right. Please stay on You're topic. You're going to introduce Civil War children <laughs> at the fucking, at 6 We gotta get out of here. We're eight minutes past. We're gonna get into this now? Past lives Don't are you. wild. Also, we weren't <laughs> speaking about creepy children yeah. saying things. Right. Sincerely, your past <laughs> lives are crazy. The Civil War kids are Look, haunted I said it was, by goats. I said it was 608, two guys were like, fuck, we gotta get to the next thing. <laughs> He's People right. just left. <laughs> He's right. Um, all right, Chowda. Uh, yeah. I hope everything works out. Uh, prioritize yourself, and then you can prioritize your other relationships, but do everything in a healthy fashion. We wish you well. Sincerely, your pen pals, Daniel Van Scovel, Rory Van Kirk. Anna Burner. Kurt Brunner. You love it. <laughs> Kurt Brunner. Love love it. It. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. you know what? Pen Pals is produced by Lissa Rubin and engineered and mixed by Chad Bouchard. Our artwork was created by Jeffrey Tice, and our theme music is by Patrick Keenan of The Winter Sounds. You can follow Pen Pals on Twitter and Instagram at the Pen Pals Pod. You can see all of that content thanks to Caitlin Bordini, who runs our social media. Head to youtube.com slash Daniel Van Kirk Comedy to watch these episodes absolutely free and subscribe to patreon.com slash penpals. For only $5, you can listen to a follow-up letter every week and you'll be the first to hear all upcoming Pen Pals news. But the easiest way to support the show is to rate, review, and subscribe on iTunes and tell everyone you know about your two favorite cackling idiots. Hashtag grow the show. <laughs>